Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this gorgeous, gorgeous fall day. It is a Saturday afternoon. That would be September 25th, 2021. And I have got a lot on my plate and uh, I might have some Airbnbers come up during this video at which point I'll have to beat a hasty retreat. But uh, since it is Saturday, it is time for our Hopium Roundup rant where I've just, uh, you know, for the past few weeks I've just been taking all of this greenwashing uh, BS and all of this Hopium and whatnot and just sticking it over here for Saturday for our sick twisted laugh, our weekly laugh and uh, there is a overflowing, you need to go get that chippy like that, there is an overflowing amount of Hopium and greenwashing and whatnot. Uh, so I'm not going to have time, I think I have eight or nine to uh, touch on today in the apocalyptimism well. Uh, so I'm just going to be able to touch on a few of these. We're going to start out <clears throat> at the good old United Nations. This dude, uh, Anthony Guterres, is, is really become the, the newest doomer of the, of the planet here. So what is going on? What does Anthony have to say to the world leaders at the UN meeting in New York? The world must wake up. Yes, this is, okay, this is Anthony, Anthony, Antonio Guterres uh, talking to world leaders, quote, we face the greatest cascade of crises in our lifetime. We are on the edge of an abyss and moving in the wrong direction. I am here to sound the alarm. The world must wake up. Yes. Uh, nevertheless, the UN chief said he has hope. The, oh. the UN chief has hope. Well, yes. I don't have hope, but I have a kid, so I have to have something, so it's called hope. There you go, Cope. I've got I, I love this. In this article on the UN, something went wrong. Something went wrong. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> an error occurred. Yes, an error did occur. So that is Anthony Happy Guterres. Hey, I uh, see. It took a few days, but I'm here, and he didn't. He's still living. Yes. He didn't fucking kill him. So. No. Oops. No. This is the. He's not a teenager. He's not having remember what channel things. you're. This is. Remember where you are, girl. There's no f bombs allowed. Okay. Ooh, we're on clap, clap, so clap. what is uh, okay, what is our planet saving Joe Biden up to this <laughs> week? Joe Biden announced his plan to combat extreme heat caused by climate well, change. Yes. Okay, so make make yourself a, a he has legend. Announced an interagency plan to deal with the effects of frequent extreme heat waves caused by global warming and as extreme heat is now thing. the leading weather related killer in the United mm -hmm. States. And one thing, he has grandchildren who are probably talking to him about this. That is the kids know what's yes. going on. They're not easily fooled and maybe he's, they've got his ear. So do you want to read no, Sandy I'm what leaving. Joe Biden is doing to, uh, to, to combat? Uh, okay. This is Joe Biden saving the planet from heat waves. The Department of Health and Human Services has issued guidance giving states, tribes, and territories the flexibility to use funds already designated for assisting low-income households with heating bills and instead direct those funds to for air conditioning. To air conditioning! I just gotta get more air conditioning! All right! This okay. is the American Rescue Plan. <laughs> All right! Turn up the air conditioning! Turn it up. All right, we're gonna turn up the air conditioning. I'm out of here. Man, thank you, Joe Biden, for saving the planet from climate change. All right, uh, and if if uh, 
if you can't count on Anthony Guterres, the UN, and Joe Biden to save you uh, from uh, catastrophe, how about artificial intelligence? Yes, artificial intelligence could provide early warning system for catastrophic climate tipping points. Yes. A new artificial intelligence system could assess tipping points in the world's ecosystems and act as an early warning system to help stop runaway climate change. Researchers have said climate tipping points are a particular threat to life on Earth as when they are reached, they can set off chain reactions of climate altering processes, supercharging global heating, and rapidly exacerbating the existing climate crisis. Examples include the melting of the Arctic permafrost, which could release massive amounts of methane, which would generate further rapid heating, the breakdown of ocean current systems, Yes, blah, blah, blah. However, using a deep learning algorithm, the researchers examine thresholds beyond which rapid or irreversible change happens in a system. Yes, quoting this uh, techno utopian, we found that our new algorithm was able to not only predict the tipping points more accurately than existing approaches, but also provide information about what type of state lies beyond the tipping point. Yes, many of these tipping points are undesirable. Many of these tipping points are undesirable and we would like to prevent them if we can. Yes. Uh, the researchers train the AI, the AI on what they described as a universe of possible tipping points, including around half a million ecosystem models. Yes and then tested it on specific tipping points. Yes, our improved method could raise red flags when we are close to a dangerous tipping point. Providing improved early warning of tipping points could help societies adapt and reduce their vulnerability to what is coming even if they cannot avoid it. Yes, uh, all right, from tipping points to dead zones. I might come back and make this my, uh, my doomsday sermon tomorrow about dead zones. The, the one off of Oregon and Washington in particular, but uh, dead zones all around the world uh, in general, uh, most dead zones are caused by agriculture and something. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might come back to this long, in-depth tutorial on dead zones. But of course, we go down, we get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into this long book length. Uh, we finally, at the bottom, we find our hopium under possible solutions to dead zones. Okay, possible solutions to the dead zone problem off the coast of the Pacific Northwest and I guess any other dead zone range from difficult to nearly impossible at the state level. But there are actions that can be taken to help mitigate problems. 
because the dead zone is caused by climate change, we could limit statewide or better yet worldwide emissions of greenhouse gases, which would hopefully prevent further damage to the ecosystem. Uh, our option to adapt is that we must and are searching for new fishing spots. Yeah, so go fishing somewhere else. Uh, of course, there is not much we can do, but we can still do it. Yes. Uh, it is entirely possible that if this issue persists, there will not be any more new fishing spots to move to. Yes. In a lot of situations, we are either told that we need to either prevent changes or learn to adapt. However, we have passed a tipping point and we will need to do our best to prevent further changes and adapt in order to find new ways to make up for the economic losses of a changing planet. There you go. Uh, there is not much we can do, but we can still do it. There you go. There is not much we can do, but we can still do it. Okay, let's just look. Uh, we're going to go over to see how the capitalists are saving the planet. This is this group of planet eaters called Salesforce. Salesforce reaches net zero energy usage and announces updates to sustainability cloud. Yes, Salesforce has often preached about responsible capitalism and today at Dreamforce, the company's annual customer extravaganza, it announced a notable achievement in the battle against climate change. The company said that it has achieved net zero energy usage across its entire value chain with 100% renewable energy. Good for sales force. Uh, at the same time, it announced updates to the sustainability cloud, a product that this company sells to other companies to manage their climate initiatives, proving you can, you can be responsible and still be capitalists. You can be responsible and still be capitalist. There you go. Good for sales for uh, anyway, guys. I could make a, I, it gets a lot better, uh, but I've I've got a lot on here. Uh, sustainability is undergoing a transformation and that it is going from something that is a nice to have to something that's actually at the heart of business transformation itself. Yes. Uh, part of what that means is that companies are moving significant resources in order to respond to the climate crisis and moving sustainability to the core of how they do business. Yes. Anyway, from those capitalists to saving the planet. Okay. What is eco-anxiety and how can you manage it?
Okay, we're gonna check out Eco Anxiety. Yes. Uh, many of us are now experiencing a condition called Eco Anxiety. Yes, and its effects are very real. In Eco Anxiety, has increased over the years. Uh, this is Dr. Chris A. Kevorkian, who has devoted her life as a shrink to, uh, to uh, helping people with eco-anxieties. Okay, how to deal with eco-anxiety. <clears throat> All right. First, of course, limit your social media. They always say that one. Uh, all right. While different strategies will work for different people, Kevorkian believes that taking action is the best cure for alleviating your eco anxiety. When it comes to both environmental grief and eco anxiety, I encourage people to sit for a moment and just in that one moment find something to be grateful for. If you're able to see the beauty of nature for one moment and appreciate her, then do it. If you're not, then think about all those people who are working to save nature. While Kevorkian admits there is, quote, an overwhelming amount of horrible things happening in our world today, close quote, that requires time to process. It should, she says, it should not hold you back from doing your part. It's easy to stay in bed with the covers over our heads, hoping someone else will do something. But it's time for us to start putting nature first and that she need and, and all that she needs because without her, we won't exist. So if taking action seems overwhelming at times, quote, Make peace with the fact that you cannot do everything. I find it helpful to network and see firsthand that other people are working on issues that I care deeply about, but don't have the time to contribute to. There you go. Ah. <laughs> That is how to get rid of your eco-anxiety. All right, several uh, stories on hydrogen. Looking at hydrogen cars, German auto giants place their bets on hydrogen cars. <clears throat> Battery power may be the front runner to become the car technology of the future, but don't rule out the underdog, hydrogen. That's the view of some major automakers, including BMW and Audi, which are developing hydrogen fuel cell passenger vehicle prototypes alongside their, alongside their fleets of battery cars as part of preparation to abandon fossil fuels. Yes, uh, but anyway, so we, it was really this one uh, next to that article. For people who don't understand, uh, don't understand how they make the hydrogen for the cars, let Time Magazine explain it to you. I don't know if this is hopium or not. Take it away. Time Magazine and explain to the apocalyptic how hydrogen is made. Fossil fuel companies say hydrogen 
and these automakers like the ones I just talked about, fossil fuel companies say hydrogen made from natural gas is a climate solution. Yes, but the tech may not be very green. Yes. <clears throat> As a committee of climate scientists and environmental officials deliberated over how to drastically cut New York State's carbon footprint last summer, natural gas industry representatives were, were putting forward a counterintuitive pitch. Hydrogen made from fossil fuels. The concept was simple explain natural gas proponents serving on the state's Climate Action Council, industrial hydrogen suppliers have long used a process called steam methane reforming to produce what the industry calls gray hydrogen from natural gas, a system that now accounts for 95% of all current hydrogen production, but releases large amounts of carbon emissions. Emissions-free green hydrogen can be produced using water and renewable electricity, but that tends to be much more expensive than making gray hydrogen. The solution, the solution natural gas industry representatives say is to pursue a kind of carbon compromise, this is called bargaining, instead of making expensive green hydrogen, industrial gray hydrogen facilities could be outfitted with carbon capture systems that bury their emissions underground, voila, a new color in the hydrogen rainbow safe, clean, abundant, blue hydrogen to power the economy of our future. Yes, and uh, but anyone who thinks windmills are out of the game, new offshore windmill design has lots of fans. Wait, wait, fans, they, they, they literally mean uh, that the newest windmill design has lots of fans. There you go. A Norwegian company has come up with a radically different design for offshore wind tur turbines that could help the world achieve its renewable energy goals. Yes. Uh, so the answer is floating wind farms, which uh, is a 1,000 foot high grid-like network of smaller turbines that spin faster, generating more energy. I can only imagine what a flock of seabirds flying through this thing is going to look like. Instead of one thing going around and around, is unbelievable. How, I, I still don't understand how birds and even bats get hit by, by the, the one damn thing. So what we're going to do, instead of one of these things, we're going to have dozens and dozens of rapidly spinning little fans make this big old screen offshore where all of the seabirds sea are flying around and migrating and uh, put a thousand or ten thousand high-speed spinning fans in their path. And uh, that is how we're going to save the planet if you're not a seabird. But uh, all of this high-tech stuff you know, all of this high-tech stuff, AI, hydrogen, fancy windmills, all of this stuff 
right here in the New York Times, the unconventional weapon against future wildfires, goats. Goats. When mega fires burn in unison and harsh droughts parks the West, local governments, utilities, and companies struggle with how to prevent outbreaks, especially as each year brings record destruction. Yes. <clears throat> Carrying an unconventional weapon, Lanny Malberg travels the American West in an Arctic Fox camper occupying a small but vital entrepreneurial niche in the battle against wildfires. Yes. How about goats? We're just going to stick a bunch of goats out there. You know? And I love it how they talk about using an electric fence to confine the goats. Oh, God. Oh, I was going to do uh, an update. Uh, I don't have it in here. So I guess this... Sandy, who is the name of that climatologist you interviewed? Is that Peter Kalmus? Peter Kalmus. Peter Kalmus. He was on the third biggest story on the planet today, yes? interviewing Peter Kalmus, and, and I, I, I don't think you touched that. So anyway, I just interviewed him. Peter Kalmus, the third biggest story on planet Earth, an interview with Peter Kalmus. Obviously, they saw Sandy's uh, interview with Peter. Oh, said we need to talk to this guy. So according to Peter, he I don't know if maybe. Maybe he mentioned this on Sandy's interview, and I just missed it. Uh, according to Peter, he is a uh, NASA climatologist. He has crunched the numbers on that, uh, you know, that carbon-sucking vacuum cleaner up there in uh, in Iceland. We have been talking about uh, for the past few weeks the biggest carbon uh, carbon removal which is not quite the same as carbon capture. I'm talking about sucking the carbon out of the air. How much, how long does it take humanity to put in the atmosphere what that, the world's biggest carbon removal vacuum cleaner on the planet sucks out in one year? Okay, you run this thing for one year, how long and you, it, it, with those that much carbon, how long will it take humanity to spew that much carbon back into the air? All right, I'm gonna give you four chances. Uh, does it take three years for humanity? <clears throat> Does it take three months? We'll have more than a four chance. All right. Does it take humanity three years to replace that carbon? Does it take three months? Does it take three weeks? Does it take three days? Does it take three hours for humanity? Does it take three minutes for humanity to put that much carbon back up in the air? Or does it take what's left? Three seconds. Three seconds, three minutes, three hours, three days, three weeks, three months, or three years. According to NASA scientist Peter Kalmus, after doing, uh, crunching all the numbers in his computer, if your answer was three seconds, three seconds, which I think is, what did he say, one ten millionth of, uh, we would have to build ten million, ten 
million of, uh, of these things to suck the carbon back out of the air that humanity is putting in it and you will still find all of these uh, clueless moron uh, apocalyptimist cheering on what I forgot what did that thing cost to build was it 15 million dollars I'm, I'm I thinking 15 million is that right to suck three seconds worth of carbon out of the air assuming you know it's up and running full speed 24 hours a day for a year but anyway uh, maybe that will uh, put the final nail in, in that coffin but uh, I've got to wrap this up because uh, I want you to see talking about some hopium this is what I've been doing with my week is out digging my uh, my little flood control channel to keep my house from uh, going down the river out here digging this this channel anyway guys get out there and uh, dig your flood control channels while you still can bye guys